Hey everybody, Andrew here. Today we're gonna to be making a little origami lamp for my bedroom. I'm wanting something for that space that sort of plays off the angles of the tile and the angles of the cabinetry, something that will bring a really strong white element to the dark built-ins, and something that will give a soft, warm, magical light in that room. I also wanted to do something more calm and chill and simple this week. The bedroom makeover is gonna be done next week. That video is huge, that process is huge. There's so many projects to do in that room. My parents and I are working really hard on that. So we're going to calm ourselves here and just do a little relaxing origami folding. I think this is going to bring a really great element to the room. Can't wait to get started. Let's do it. Also, you may have noticed that I no longer have the awful ceiling fan behind me. This is the light fixture that I showed in my thrift haul video a couple weeks ago that I got at the ReStore for $15. This is some sort of weird homemade Sputnik contraption. I was not really sure what to do with it with all the cords, but we've kind of draped them in an artistic way. So it feels like one of those mid-century mobile Sputnik type lamps, but more industrial and workshop-like, which is gonna be more of a vibe for this space. Also, so this is how everything goes. Um, when you're planning to put up the fixture in here, just to take a look at how it's gonna go, because I can't wait to see how it's gonna look. And we pull off the ceiling fan and we look up in there and there's this wallpapered ceiling happening. I knew that the ceiling went up higher in this room, similar to how it was in the kitchen, but I had sort of made peace with the fact that this was gonna be what it was gonna be. We would just make it work. But now that the ceiling is there and this room is sort of coming together design-wise, it's hard not to imagine this with another two feet of ceiling up there to make this feel a little bit more airy and light and creative and all the vibes that I want going on in here. So in my thrift haul video, this thrifted light came from the ReStore. This is the one that has a super long eight foot rod. So I think we're gonna cut it at three feet and hang it up in here. And then if we get an extra two feet of ceiling at some point, we'll have the five foot length that we can put instead and swap out. So I think we found an okay solution to allow us to go ahead and install this today and take a look. Okay, so for this project, we're going to be referencing a couple of different types of lamps that I found. Nothing's exactly what I want, but I'm going to kind of take from elements and customize it and just sort of use that as a jumping off point. First was this blog from Nostalgie Cat. I really like the way this lamp looks overall and kind of the proportions of it. This is a hanging lamp, not a table lamp, but I like the way that she talked about fireproofing the paper. I'm going to be putting an LED bulb in it, so I'm not super worried about heat. But just to be on the safe side, we are gonna follow her technique for that. And then there are a couple different videos that I found on YouTube that I'll link below that show different folded lamps. This is more or less the technique that I'm gonna be using, although the proportions of the paper and how you choose to do it will make it look different. I'm gonna talk about that in a moment. And rather than making my own base here, I'm gonna be using this lamp that I found at the ReStore for $3.50, I believe it was. We're gonna be doing some modifications to it, but rather than having something that sits up high, I wanted something that was gonna sit really low and have a nice low base on. I went ahead and prepped all of my paper last night with the fireproofing technique. Let me show you how that went. Following Nostalgie Cat's instructions, I boiled six cups of water in a thrifted pot that I keep on hand for dyeing and other projects. I added 15 tablespoons of borax, two and a half tablespoons per cup, and stirred until thoroughly integrated. I poured it over my paper and left it to soak for about 10 minutes before hanging each sheet to dry. So before we jump in with our anti-fire treated paper, I wanted to do some samples of this to practice my folding technique and also look at the proportions of the lamp. I'm using a paper size that is 12 by 18 inches, which is different than any of the paper that anyone used in anything that I could find. And so I wanted to do a sample and just see how the proportions of everything were gonna look with this paper. My mom had a bunch of this paper at her house and so I thought I would just make use of that. It's a nice sort of creamy white color. And so I spent the last hour or so doing some samples of this, changing how wide the folds are away from each other. So this was my first one that was more like the ones that I saw online, where it's essentially kind of folded into quarters. So it's a lot, a lot of folds there. Then I did this one here, which was done like half as many. I like the way this looks, but you can see here from the side that it really doesn't create a very wide arc for my bulb to sit in, as opposed to this one over here, 
that's more like your traditional paper lantern type of feel. And then I did this one in the middle that was done in like thirds, which was the trickiest to do. Um, but I think it gets kind of the graphic nature of this and the more useful nature of that into one. So I'm definitely gonna do one of the two on the left. I'm not sure which one just yet. I'm gonna think on it for just a second longer and then we'll jump in and fold our fireproof paper. Welcome to Reissued, where we make everything more complicated than it has to be. So even after all of my prototyping, I still was really not feeling this shape. And so I went back to some of my reference images and noticed that they all had more of this kind of cylindrical type shape. So I'm going rogue here. I kind of drafted my own pattern. I don't think it's gonna look exactly like my reference image, but it's gonna be closer. I haven't seen someone DIY a lamp like this before, so I'm gonna show you how I did it. Okay, so the fireproofing thing made my paper really brittle and start to tear as I was folding it. So we're gonna take our chances and we are gonna go in with the normal paper. I'm putting an LED bulb in this. Hopefully I won't have any problems, but as it is, if this paper is gonna tear every five seconds, it's just not useful to me. I don't want my lamp to fall apart really easily. So we're gonna try with the normal paper. Let's do it. After much trial and error, I arrived at a folding method that worked for me. I start by folding my paper in half lengthwise, just to give a center point for reference. Then I need to fold each side into thirds to get the proportions I want. So I measure and make a tiny mark every three inches for my 18 inch paper. For making these folds, I found it helpful to start the fold on the marks on each side and then have them meet in the middle. You could fold each side into quarters for more ribs on your lamp or in half for fewer ribs. Again, I found thirds to be the sweet spot in between, despite thirds being much trickier to achieve. Once all of these folds are made, I'm ready to subdivide each section one more time, folding back and forth to create a little accordion. There are lots of different ways to arrive at this accordion shape, but I found starting with larger segments and working down to smaller segments to be the easiest way to minimize mistakes and keep my folds even. Next, I position my paper with the edges pointing upward like a valley. I start the diagonal folds by folding the corner in, aligning the edge with the first vertical fold line. Then I jump two fold lines over and fold on the same angle, being sure only to press the fold two lines high. See what I mean? We only need the folds to come this high to achieve the cylindrical shape we're going for. This is the big difference between the patterns I found and the pattern that I'm going for. I repeat this process all the way across the paper, folding the diagonal lines on every other vertical fold. This gets a little tricky the further over you go, since the accordion folds can cause the paper to catch and not want to fold. I try to smooth out the paper and create an arc over my hand so that it doesn't crunch in on itself. And then I repeat this process coming from the other side. I need to finish the X's on each end by folding the paper further up and only pressing that one little diagonal between the last fold and the edge of the paper. One side done. Let's repeat that process on the other edge of the paper. Now that we have all our folds, I found it helpful to re-establish my accordion to get things bending in the right direction again. From there, I work one end at a time, finding the larger triangle and gently pressing it in and down, then the smaller one. 
big, small, big, small, alternating down to the end of the paper. Same for the other side. Once everything is folding the right way, I can collapse the paper entirely, check to be sure that all of my triangles are folded in, and then press firmly to lock in my shape. One panel done. I think I'll need two more, so let's speed up this process a bit. With my three panels folded, I need to connect them somehow. I'm going to cut some half inch strips that I'll glue behind the edges of my panels to connect them. I've seen some people leave a little extra tab outside the folded area on one end of each panel for overlapping and gluing. I love that idea, but I didn't have the brain power to subtract the little extra bit from my 18 inch sheets. So my added tabs should work just fine. Once I glue them on with the glue stick, I can coax them into folding seamlessly with the rest of my panels, leaving us with one big panel. Okay, so we just finished off the lamp. Let me talk you through the final steps here. So first, I had intended to use the original base that was on the Goodwill lamp that I thrifted and just paint it like a matte black. However, once I tested my paper around the lamp, I thought it was gonna be a little bit too wide to sit on this base. So we're gonna be using this wood base that my mom had on hand from an old lamp that she had. It's a little bit wider. It also matches the wood look of our inspiration lamp. So we're gonna go with that. My dad helped me rewire it by taking the socket and the wiring and everything out of the Goodwill lamp and re threading it up through the wood base piece. This was also a good opportunity to make it nice and short, drop the bulb down to the bottom so that it'll sit right in the middle of my paper piece. Problem solved there. The little chain pole thing is not super ideal in this case, but again, I'm gonna be using a smart bulb in this case, so it'll be hooked up to my Alexa and she'll be able to turn it on and off, change the color, whatever I need to do. For the lampshade, I went in with a heavy needle and a quilting thread doubled up. I threaded that through all of the points on the inside there. Once I threaded it through, I went in with some painter's tape and just taped off the edges there just so it didn't pull right back through the other way. And so then I was able to tie the top and bottom and experiment with different tightnesses for those, whether it was gonna be bigger or smaller. What I opted to do there was make it as tight as possible, but still being able to sit over the bulb so that I can pull the shade on and off if I need to change the bulb. And once I got the correct tightness, I went ahead and knotted this multiple times so that it'll hold in place, clipped the threads, and we're done. I am so happy with how this turned out. It looks so much like the lamp that was my inspiration for this. I'm gonna be giving you a little bit of a sneak peek at the bedroom, but if you wanna see that full makeover transformation, be sure that you're subscribed. That video is gonna drop next week. It's gonna be amazing. As always, if you like this video, be sure to hit the like button. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys soon.